Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. You hear me, you f Boy, I probably can't play that part. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Jordan Smith, VP of Sales and Marketing at iProv. Today, I'm gonna to be watching and reacting uh, to the most famous scene from Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Uh, be prepared for lots of bleeps, car horns, or whatever else uh, Jeff feels like putting over some of the bleeps. Here we go. Let me have your attention for a moment. Cause you're talking about what? You're talking about? about that sale you shot some son of a bitch don't want to buy land somebody don't want what you're selling some broad you're trying to so forth let's talk about something important uh first of all i want to tell everybody if you're selling land uh by phone at 7 30 at night uh <laughs> by cold calling them <laughs> dude i don't have any tips to help you out go find another job that sounds terrible are they all here all but one well i'm going anyway let's talk about something important Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm with you? I am not with you. All right, this is one thing I do agree with. Coffee's for closers. If you can't close, don't drink coffee. I'm here from downtown. I'm here from Mitch and Murray. And I'm here on a mission of mercy. Your name's Levine? Yeah. You call yourself a salesman, you son of a... I don't gotta listen to this. You certainly don't, pal. Because the good news is you're fired. Uh, you know what one thing I do like about this is? Is uh, they're okay with being called salesmen. You know... Uh, so often what frustrates me is sales is viewed as like such a dirty word that people think that this, these are sales guys, the greasy dudes in a, in a, in a basement office, cold calling people during dinner, trying to sell them something so that they get a steak knife or a car. Uh, one, if you are selling like that, then sure, sales is a dirty connotation, but there's no reason why the word sales should be an ugly word these days, right? We're all, we're all selling something, right? If you're in a company and you're not doing sales, guess what? I hate to tell you this, every day you walk into the office, every day you do your job, every time you have a performance review, you're, you are selling you. You're selling yourself, you're selling the value of the company. So first things first, uh, uh, this probably contributed to some of that, um, but sales is not a dirty word and it shouldn't be. If you're in sales, be proud to be in sales. Beat your chest. Somebody says, what do you do? I'm a client consultant or I'm a this or that. Dude, you're in sales. I hate to tell you, be proud of it. The bad news is you've got all you've got just one week to regain your job, starting with tonight. Starting with tonight's sit. You know, that's an interesting concept is we're all fired, uh, but we've got another week to do our job. In sales, that's the way you always feel is, oh cool, I'm fired uh, unless I reach my quota this month. I'm fired unless I um, set X amount of appointments. That is uh, that is a thing that even, even me, who've been doing this for, for you know, almost a decade, and has probably brought in more than $6 million in revenue in my career, yeah, that, you always feel like you're fired, um, but you got another week or two to kind of prove it to you. Oh, have I got your attention now? Good. Because we're adding a little something to this month's sales contest. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. <laughs> Ooh. Who needs that many steak knives? Do you need a set of steak knives? Like, how many people are eating steaks? That's a bunch of steak knives. That also seems like a big jump. You get a new car or a set of steak. How much are steak knives? All right, I'm gonna have to Google how much steak knives are eventually. Jeff, put in how many, how much, how much average set of steak knives are. It's a big jump. Third prize is you're fired. Oh, well, I'm, uh, okay, another big leap. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get picture.
A, B, C. A always, B, B, C closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. How many folks have heard this? A, B, C, always be closing. Listen, honestly, if you're always closing, you're not doing a good enough job at selling. If you have to close hard, you haven't done a good enough job at selling or digging into those real emotional pain points. I know they're going to talk about this here in just a second, but um, this is maybe another reason why salespeople get a bad name is it's, hey, my name's Jordan. Let me tell you what I've got uh, to sell you. Uh, and then, um, you know, let's talk about what next steps are and how, how you're going to buy and stop closing and start listening, right? That's what I would say. Always be closing. I'd change it to ABL. Always be listening. A-I-D-A. -A. Attention, interest, decision, action. Attention. Do I have your attention? Interest. Are you interested? I know you are, because it's f or walk. You close or you hit the bricks. Decision. Have you made your decision for Christ? An action. A-I-D-A. -A. Get out there. You got the prospects coming in. You think they came in to get out of the rain? I'd switch that up a little bit, right? If it was me looking at this, um, and granted, I've, I've been doing this for a little bit, you know, A, attention. Pay attention, right? Ask them questions. Be attentive, right? Don't use these as talking points, you know. Hey, uh, Jordan, tell me a little bit about your organization. Like, what are you struggling with? You know, what, 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 what are some of the things that... Um, magic wand scenario that if you could wave today, you know, what, how, what would those things be and how would they impact your business? Uh, I, interest. Be interested, right? Don't just glaze over and wait for them to stop talking so that you uh, can hop in and say the next bullet point that's on your sell sheet. So A, be attentive. Uh, I, interest. You know, are you interested? Flip it, right? Are you interested in them? Because if not, they're going to read it all over your face and they're going to know. You're just trying to sell them for the sake of selling them. Decision. Uh, I do like that one. Not are you ready to make a decision. How do you make a decision? Dig into that decision process that they have in their organization. If you're selling B2B, it's important to figure out what that decision hierarchy is. If you're selling directly to a customer, figure out how they're going to make their decision or when they're going to make a decision. Don't push them to make a decision figure out what their decision process is, then you as a salesperson, not a dirty word, a salesperson, can figure out if they're at the point where they can even buy, you know? So that's how I would switch some of these up. Action, A, let's take action now. I would say that action can be anything. Maybe it's a, I'm gonna follow up with you in six months, Hey, let's go ahead and schedule our next conversation because now that I know what the decision process is, it sounds like we need to get some multiple people in there. So again, attention, interest, decision, action. I like those steps. I would flip it to be more internal as opposed to just a list of things that, that direct you on, on, on how to close on the next step. But this is interesting. I like the framework. I just think they have it backwards. A guy don't walk on the lot lest he wants to buy. They're sitting out there waiting to give you their money. Are you going to take it? Are you man enough to take it? I want to say this, and this is very important. Uh, he said people are out there waiting to give you money. Hmm. Uh, you are not going to be able to sell anything unless you hit on the emotional reasons on why your product or service is going to solve some issue that they have. He talked about the, the AIDA thing that he talked about earlier. Those questions should be digging up kind of emotional things that they should buy, right? If not, we'd all be driving the same car because every car gets us to point A or point B. It's the way that the car makes us feel when we sit in there. It's the new car smell. It's those emotional cues. What's the problem, pal? You, Moss. You're such a hero. You're so rich. How come you're coming down here wasting time with such a bunch of bumps? You see this watch? You see this watch? Yeah. That watch costs more than your car. I need a nicer watch. 
I made $970,000 last year. How much you make? You see, pal, that's who I am, and you're nothing. Nice guy? I don't give a Good father? F*** you. Go home and play with your kids. You want to work here? Close! You think this is abuse? You think this is abuse, you You can't take this. How can you take the abuse you get on a shit? You don't like it. Leave. I can go out there tonight. The materials you got make myself $15,000. Tonight, in two hours, can you? Can you? Go and do likewise. A-I-D-A. -A. Get mad, you son of a bitch. Get mad. You know what it takes to sell real estate? <laughs> Does he just have those around? What are those for? They not cling around when he's walking around? So in a suitcase, he's got the good leads uh, and just these brass balls. What does he do with them? It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Oh, they were just for effect. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, he, he had he carries around brass balls with him all day long just to hold them up like that. That's funny. All right, I do like that. I'm back on his side. I'm with you, Alec Baldwin. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> I agree with everything you said now. <laughs> I'm just carrying around brass balls. All right, buddy. Go and do likewise, gents. The money's out there. You pick it up, it's yours. You don't, I got no sympathy for you. You want to go out on those sits tonight and close? Close, it's yours. Not, you're going to be shining my shoes. And you know what you'll be saying? Bunch of losers sitting around in the bar. Oh, yeah. I used to be a salesman. It's a tough racket. These are the new leads. Ooh. These are the Glen Gary leads. And to you, they're gold. And you don't get them. Why? Because to give them to you is just throwing them away. They're for closers. I wish you good luck, but you wouldn't know what to do with it if you got it. Now's also a good time to talk about motivation. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to dangle a carrot out, especially in sales, right? I'm a big believer in um, you know, making what you earn and earning what you make, especially in sales. So you do need to have some sort of reward structure in there. It's always good to have a carrot. As far as how you motivate them, uh, you can only get so long with fear and beratement. As a leader, uh, definitely should not motivate like this, right? Uh, uh, be encouraging. We're, we're big believers in role plays uh, in sales. And leads are important. I mean, one thing that that I do like about this is always be prospecting, right? You always have to prospect for folks. Um, but from a motivational standpoint, um, might work for a little bit, but you're never gonna get too far uh, motivating by uh, fear and beratement. And to answer your question, pal, why am I here? I came here because Mitch and Murray asked me to. They asked me for a favor. I said, the real favor, follow my advice and fire your because a loser is a loser. All right, so that was interesting. Uh, Glen Gary, Glenn Ross, right? Uh, just remember, right? Uh, if you're always closing, you're not doing a good enough job at selling. R remember, you want to give somebody a rewarding experience that they're excited to come back and buy again from you, right? They don't want to f leave the room or the car lot or whatever feeling like uh, they got taken advantage of and they got closed when they didn't want to get closed, right? Uh, AIDI, right? Uh, attention, interest, decision, and action. Those are great things to, to kind of abide by from a sales perspective. But flip it around. Don't just use those as pressure points. 
to push on people. Use those as, as, as mantras or reminders to yourself to be attentive, right? Be interested, right? Figure out uh, how they're gonna make their decision, when they're gonna make their decision, and what all goes into it. Um, and action, create some sort of next step that everybody's excited about. And then the, the, the very last thing, which is motivation. Don't motivate with fear, right? It's important to have a carrot that you dang. It's important to reward them for doing a good job, whether it's a $20,000 car or apparently a $100 set of steak knives, <laughs> but be, be positive, right? positive energy out, positive energy back. Uh, don't always try to motivate by fear because you're not going to get very far for very long. Um, and then the very last tip, which I think is important, are always carry around brass balls in your suitcase because they're just fun. <laughs> hey, listen, comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video and if you'd like me to do more. What are some other kind of, what are some other, other, other depictions of sales in movies or TV shows? I'd love to be able to watch more of these and, and share my thoughts. This is fun. Uh, as always, iProv Online, uh, give us a visit. We have lots of tips on there almost daily uh, about different things from business leadership to sales to marketing to whatever you can imagine in business. Um, and I look forward to uh, hearing y'all's comments. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about ABC, AIDI, Glengarry Glen Ross, um, or just carrying around sales props in a suitcase for whenever you need them. All right, I'm Jordan Smith. Until next time, peace peeps.